everyone on the Tech Committee. This is David Taylor. We begin with a brief discussion of the so-called new literacies, as you see here, and also sometimes called 21st century literacy. The money quote from this site is important to our discussion. Today's readers become literate by learning to read the words and symbols in today's world. They analyze multiple representations from a variety of disciplines, including text, photographs, artwork, and data. Put another way, 21st century literacy is the place where aural, oral, and digital literacies merge. The result of that merger is what some call a new literacy. The ability to read and produce texts that contain words, but also photographs, artwork, video, infographics, Excel spreadsheets, and more. A new language being born. That certainly is the position of the new media consortium. A group of 500 major universities, foundations, and new media companies like Adobe, who reported in their 2005 book, A Global Imperative, the report of the 21st Century Literacy Summit, the following conclusion. A profound shift is taking place in the way people communicate and express themselves. A new language is being born. The global imperative which the new media consortium speaks of aims directly at our industry, education. The imperative, they say, is to adapt to this new language or die, or become irrelevant, same thing. And what are the primary features of this new language that we educators must learn? They're not hard to guess, and they offer striking contrast to the traditional notions of literacy. This new language is multimodal. Spoken and written words provide only two pathways to meaning. The new literacy also relies on sounds, music, still images, and full motion video to convey a message. And because it is multimodal, this language is also multi-layered. Our new multimedia texts contain powerful and rich nonverbal meanings, which are derived from images, film, music, photography, drawing, and animation, all of which give these texts a potential impact beyond what is possible through traditional language. This language is also modular. In other words, the message consists of distinct pieces or chunks, which are synthesized into a larger structure. As a result, today we no longer merely write documents. We must design them. This new language is also highly interactive, collaborative, and immediate. This is what business strategists Evans and Webster must have meant when they wrote, the last and most important wave in the information revolution is the age of connectivity. In business, connectivity has created the virtual organization where remote employees communicate electronically to engage in collaborative work practices. Is it possible to provide a better example of such a virtual organization than a large online university with thousands of students and faculty nationwide, worldwide? The digital classroom provides one of the best platforms for conveying information and developing skills in this new digital language. We're very, very lucky in this regard. The online education model is, in important ways, predicated on the new literacy. We have little choice but to speak it. And guess what type of learning material best incorporates the features of this new literacy? Multimedia, of course. It also should come as no surprise that research and practice in distance learning slash online education is increasingly turning toward multimedia materials and methods that, quote, every instructor should learn in the 21st century. And yes, you can, of course, get a degree now in TEL, Technical Enhanced Learning. But let's look particularly at this International Journal of Instructional Technology and Distance Learning which devoted its February 2007 issue to a discussion of multimedia learning that contained this figure. I call your attention to it because you're going to see this diagram over and again in the field of multimedia learning. Diagrams of the cognitive theory for multimedia learning focus first and foremost on the twin processors that our brain possesses, the auditory channel and the visual channel. 
By utilizing both pathways, the learner's attention is held longer and the long-term memory is more effectively altered, resulting in greater, deeper learning. One of the primary researchers given credit for establishing this effect is University of California Santa Barbara professor Richard Mayer, whose 2001 Multimedia Learning serves as a seminal work in this field, as does his 2005 follow-up, The Cambridge Handbook of Multimedia Learning. Both books, and really the entire field, is built on these two ideas. First, the dual coding theory of Canadian professor Alan Pavio, who speculated that the brain uses one channel for processing visual information and a second distinct channel for auditory information. Richard Mayer used Pavio's theory as the basis of his research into the effect of multimedia materials on learning. Mayer documented what he calls the modality effect which is that learning is significantly increased when information is presented simultaneously through both channels, visual and auditory. Mayer published his results in 1995, and the resulting explosion of interest in multimedia learning parallels the explosive growth of online education and feeds educational sites like Merlot, sort of the Walmart, sometimes Bloomingdale's, of multimedia materials. As you can see in this most recent screenshot, let's blow this up a little, there are now over 18,000 free multimedia learning objects on Merlot, contributed by its more than 54,000 members. There are now the inevitable multimedia learning companies, obviously a startup here, judging from the design, and of course the inevitable multimedia blogs, and you definitely know something is afoot when one of the largest new media companies in the world, Adobe, devotes resources to the, quote, value of multimedia in learning. Not surprisingly, Patty Shank's PDF that you see here contains the familiar diagram that gives us dual coding and the modality effect. Here you see the visual channel first, and then the auditory channel and together they invoke the modality effect, which leads to increased learning in the long-term memory. So that's some background or justification for taking the time, and it does take time, to mess with videos for your students. But narrated videos, even average ones in my opinion, are potentially more powerful than the very best written, very best designed text-based document in the world because narrated video speaks the new language, a language that just happens to result in increased attention and retention for our students.